Hello everybody, uh, I'm Christina Arwood, the Marketing Coordinator for the University of Southern Indiana College of Liberal Arts. I'm here with Kevin Sitzer, one of our alums. What year did you graduate? 97. 97, okay. So he is back with us as our first artist in residence and also the first person to construct something within the gallery, which uh, we're in the Mac Pace Gallery on campus. And uh, thank you for <laughs> joining me for this. It's our first interview like this, but um, I've got some questions, but hopefully, yeah, we can expand upon these. So uh, the title of this piece that you worked on, what is it? The title of it is Sack Race with Knives. Sack Race with Knives, and what made you name it that? Uh, I, I, I felt like that's pretty much what the world needs. Like <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> um, and then I know just from reading about it before actually seeing it, you've collected these pieces from around town, is that right? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, I pretty much showed up with, with nothing and had to start from zero, which is a little stressful. Oh yeah, I can but, but, uh, but a very good challenge at the same time. Mm -hmm. And over the course of the time that you've been here, you said you came, I think, the was it the last week or last two weeks of mm -hmm. September? I had two weeks to build you all this. <laughs> Um, and what was maybe the hardest part of building this, do you think? Other than getting all the pieces? Uh, finding the materials, was, honestly. Yeah. Because I moved away from Evansville uh, eight years ago. So all of my spots where oh, I would find things, yeah. they're long gone. Uh -huh. So uh, I kind of had to uh, drive around a lot, okay. a lot of extra. But uh, I had a lot of help. Okay. Like a, a lot of people, like from New Harmony Gallery and different okay. people kind of giving me tips of where to go, so, but uh, yeah. Uh, I think we mentioned you hit a heavy trash day, right? So some yeah. of that helps. <laughs> yeah, east side heavy trash day. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, and there are some marvelous things <clears throat> in here, like just something around every corner and in some of the crevices <clears throat> even. So a very, very cool piece that you've worked on. and. Um, the official unveiling of it was recently, uh -huh. I think, was it a week ago? A, about a week ago. Okay. And uh, how did people take it? What, what were the reactions whenever they finally got to step inside? Positive, as far as I can yeah. tell. <laughs> I've heard good. <laughs> I, yeah, I'll take your word for it because I, I literally worked until two hours before the opening. Oh, wow. So I was exhausted and um, I couldn't take two steps without someone wanting to talk oh, to me. Oh, of course. So, I, it was kind of a kind of a bit of a blur, but they tell me that it was, it was a good reception. Yeah, I heard a lot of the kids were enjoying like finding the little sneaky things. You said you've got is it six surprises? Six things you have to find. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> six figures in, in, in little scenarios. Yeah. Um, someone can come and and uh, just look at the structure if mm -hmm. they want and, and just experience it that way. But the more, you, this is the fourth one of these that oh, I've made. I was gonna ask, thank you. So um, the more someone interacts and investigates, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll just get a few extra bonuses. Yeah, even I found in there, um, my mom <coughs> used to bowl at Franklin Lanes, and there's a picture of some bowlers from Franklin Lanes in there. My mom's not in there, but no. still cool. Little How? Evansville relation. <laughs> now that would have been a surprise. Yeah, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> that would have been kind of wild. <laughs> but yeah. I think she kind of held on to those photos. Sure. For yeah. Well, some of this stuff I, I'm shocked to find in dumpsters that yeah. people threw away. They're very family-oriented, personal things, yeah. but I, I, I kind of feel like I, I, I give that stuff a second life. Oh, absolutely. Incorporating this stuff, but right, and it would be great. Like if somebody did happen to find something. Oh yeah. Oh, I just threw this out the other day. <laughs> oh yeah, it, which could be quite possible. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Now, did anyone actually donate anything, or this was all found? No, I had some people donate stuff. They were um, like, hey, I'm renovating my house. Oh, I've got a dumpster in the backyard you mm -hmm. can go through, which was great too. Um, because not everything is just aesthetic. You know, sure. I actually have to build this and make it structurally sound. Yeah. So uh, the inside, I actually need real building materials. Yeah. And uh, do you have any kind of like engineering experience that kind of helps with that? Or you just kind of jump around and well, see Well, no, <laughs> we, don't, we don't have to talk about it. No. <laughs> no, 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 but it's, it's uh, I, I really, I go out of my way to make 
these structures safe mm -hmm. because I know the public is going to be mm -hmm. interacting, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. children are here mm -hmm. and everything. So um, that's something that I don't have to deal with when I'm just working in the studio. Sure. Making small sculpture. Yeah. But when I've got this giant thing and it's old materials, mm -hmm. you know, quite often there's splinters or sharp things or, mm -hmm. you know, nails even. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a whole other whole other uh, thing I have to pay attention yeah, to. Yeah, when you're building it. Yeah. Um, and I was just thinking too, <coughs> it, it's really neat to be able to make your art larger than life like this and have people interact with it in that way. Because mm -hmm. I don't even know if I've seen that many things, you could, like an art piece you can walk into and kind of touch and look mm -hmm. into and really interact with it. So this is, this is really cool. <laughs> now, did you start doing things similar to this while you were at USI? Did you get your groundwork kind of going when you were still here? Like, were these ideas forming, or um, what kind of things did you focus on while you were at USI? Well, I, I think I did what lots of students do. You know, you try everything uh -huh. and figure out what works for you. So, I, you know, I worked a little bit working big, but mm -hmm. but not not so much. Mainly very small things. Mm -hmm. I didn't really start doing this kind of thing until. November of last year. Oh wow, really? Yeah, yeah. So this is this is all a new, a new adventure for me. Yeah. And the, the complete opposite of what I do in the studio. Mm -hmm. So it's really uh, uh, exciting and challenging oh, yeah. for me. Um, and in the <coughs> studio, are those more like the pieces, the, the little hidden objects that you can find in there? Yeah, okay. yeah. They're more like the, the small fingertip things. Mm -hmm. These these are a lot more. Um, quickly made mm -hmm. because I don't have very much time, but the, the ones in the studio are more complex and, mm -hmm. and detailed and oh, the yeah. craftsmanship is, is a little bit better, um, but it's small, obsessive work <laughs> and this is large, intuitive mm -hmm. improvisation and it's good to have both sides oh, yeah. of that. I mean, it all comes together. And I noticed there were actually a couple of your older pieces um, to our left over here, and I'll get some pictures of them. But um, I noticed like those were lots of little tiny found things. Yeah, as well. those are actually from when I was a student. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I did a little independent show, oh. and uh, Katie Waters bought one, and, oh, and nice. Connie Weinzaffel, who was the director of New Harmony Gallery at the time, oh. she bought the other one. Those are actually the first two pieces I ever sold. Oh wow! And how exciting was that? It was—it's really weird to see them. Oh again. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you still love them as much as you did whenever you made them? <laughs> well, I, I look at them now, and you know that's ninety-five, so uh -huh. they're old enough where I look at them now with with you know enough distance where my first reaction was, well, I don't hate these. Oh yeah, no, they're <laughs> great. I love. Um, there's one on the left that has like it looks like little fish uh -huh. vertebra in there, kind of within this little. Man, so I, I thought that was really neat. I'm into like all this. I love found object type things. So well, this here is you really go. Exactly. This is perfect. This is very for you. Cool. So, um, kind of continue with the USI talks. Um, do you have a favorite memory from when you were at USI? Oh, that's. <laughs> or favorite professor, favorite class. Uh, now you ask me to choose favorites. Well, you don't. You don't have to say professor <laughs> necessarily. But. Uh, no, I, I, I'll say. It was a really um, free time. Oh, yeah. um, it was definitely a different university when I oh, was yeah. here. You know, literally half the buildings that are, exist now mm -hmm. were not here when I was here, and now I feel really old. Oh no! But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, it was just a different, different time, and uh -huh. I, I think people weren't really paying attention to what we were doing, uh -huh. you know, so we would work just as much on our own work as, oh, yeah. you know, you get the assignments done as fast as possible, so <laughs> then you can work in, the, uh -huh. you know, the, the university studios on your own stuff, oh, and yeah. um, it was, you know, to have these amazing facilities and uh, nothing but time yeah. is a great combination. Absolutely. That's, um, I think, one of my favorite parts, too. I was an art student wasn't in the studio as much, but um, in graphic design. And uh, I still use some of those pieces from in college on my resume and in my portfolio sure. today. <laughs> so 
that's one of the nice things about here for sure. Uh, I wanted to see too um, if you could tell us some more about the career and just finding your place um, in the art field. So um, what inspired you, if you can think back, like to even pursue art and to make this your full-time thing? Uh, it had a lot to do with my teachers. Yeah. Yeah, starting in high school, mm -hmm. um, Ann Dowie, who was oh, the yeah. wife of Lenny Dowie, yeah. was my um, high school teacher. Did you go to Central? Yeah. Okay, so did I. Central. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, her, my senior year was her first year teaching oh, wow. high school ever, uh -huh. and she kind of got me on track. Uh -huh. She was the first person who ever even implied this is a real profession, mm -hmm. this is a real job, this is something people actually do, and not just some fantasy. Yeah. You know, Lenny had been uh, showing in galleries for years and years, mm -hmm. so she came at it from a different attitude, and I thought, wow, this, you know, maybe this is something that I can yeah. do. And then I came out here and kind of graduated to Lenny, oh, yeah. and then he was just continued the, the encouragement and uh, John McNaughton, he was great. Mm -hmm. he, he, he gave me the first recommendation for the first professional gallery that I was ever in, okay. and that was the start of that. Katie Waters has always been encouraging of me. Oh, yeah. I just, uh, if I didn't have that kind of support, I don't know that I'd still be doing this. Yeah. But, um, so they kind of made it seem real, so yeah. I made it real. Yeah, <laughs> and it's awesome, and everybody enjoys it, so it was a good choice. Um, do you think, though, uh, we kind of talked a little bit earlier about just misconceptions. I know something we hear a lot is you, you can't make it in mm -hmm. liberal arts, so um, what are some other misconceptions about being an artist? Being an artist? Um, I'm trying to, again, pursue this full time. I guess people have this romantic idea of mm -hmm. what goes on in an art studio. Uh -huh. Oh well, you can get up whenever you can sleep oh. till noon if you want. You know, you're your own boss. But you know, I am my own boss, mm -hmm. so I probably work more hours than I ever did at any day job. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, I, people don't think of it as uh, an artist is running a small business. Yeah, that's so true. But it really is because mm -hmm. you have to take care of the taxes and mm -hmm. take care of your money and. Shipping and oh, yeah. you know o over half of the job is not glamorous <laughs> <laughs> by any stretch, uh -huh. um, and no one's going to do the work for you. You know so true. that sounds all really depressing, mm -hmm. but that's that's what it is. You know, I mean, you still get to do. You know, I don't want to completely downplay everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure. you still get to do interesting, fun things oh, yeah. on the other side of it. Um, but There's still that business aspect. It's, and it's a lot of work. Accountability. Yeah. Exactly. So other things that you might be learning on campus right now <laughs> that will come into play later. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. And and I learned a lot of those skills here. Yeah. And uh, just I don't know. Pay attention. <laughs> Pay, Pay attention, attention in school. <laughs> so true, especially in that senior seminar class. It, it will come in handy later. <laughs> um, would you share with us any um, career advice you? Um, have received, or maybe like the best piece of advice you have received, whether it was at USI or later mm -hmm. in your career? Um, well, some good advice that I received early on was in order to make good art, you have to make a lot of bad art. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I have made a lot of bad art in my life. <laughs> um, yeah, it just, you can't get to something you're satisfied with mm -hmm. uh, uh, until you've made just tons and tons of mistakes mm -hmm. and learn from and learning from those mistakes and, and doing learning firsthand is the best way to learn. Absolutely. So uh, people are always I hear from students like I'm looking for my style, I'm looking for my voice, yes. Yes. and I think that's probably the least important thing they should be worrying about. <laughs> I mean, even their garbage, right? <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're in school, you know, try everything. Mm -hmm. And if you like an artist, 
copy everything they've ever done. The, you know, the process, if you keep going with that, um, eventually just through the fact of the, 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 whatever you're copying is going through you, um, your voice, your, your style will inevitably come out of that. But don't be afraid of like, oh, this looks too much like this person mm -hmm. or this, people are gonna, th who cares what people think? Just make, yeah. just make and make and make as much as you can, as much different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And it'll work out in the end. <laughs> Trust me, it just, 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 keep, just keep going. Yeah, well, I really appreciate your time and I won't keep you any longer, but um, if there's anything else that you'd like to share, now's your chance. <laughs> Stay in school, kids. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, I don't know. No, I, I appreciate it. <laughs>